Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. If you would have told me in the year 2019, the year 2019, yeah, that I would be listening to a Billy Ray Cyrus song with excitement, I would have told you to go kill yourself. No. Yeah. No. I mean, that is that is absolutely crazy. Absolutely I love his whole empire now. Crazy. I, I'm really? starting to think that he's a mad genius. For those of you out, out in the lands or wherever you are at home in the swamps, uh, who knows? You're not in the factories. Sw- we don't think you're I'm a in man the of the people. You're in the swamps. You could be in the factories. Yeah, who knows? You know what I'm saying? I'm a modern day Springsteen for Christ's sakes. Sure. I'm, a, I'm the people's champion. I'm, I represent the everyday man. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Just remixed Lil Nas X. It sounds kind of it sounds kind of gay, kind of flirty, doesn't it? Any Lil Nas X. Any Lil at this point to me Ugh. sounds gay. I know, but I, it's just because people have made every fun of it so much. A Lil right now, I don't understand why it's a Lil. Like it's been done. Like after Lil Wayne, you should have moved on with your life and just picked a new name. Right. It's the Lil Pump, Lil Fucking Peep. Like I, there's a mil. How low are these people? Right. You're not midgets. There's not a bunch of midgets running around the country. Uh, if you haven't heard of Lil, Lil Nas X, he is a, a black country rapper, which has become a thing, by the way. So all of his songs are like country. I, you know, I only, I, I'm going to be honest. I only know this one. Okay. That's why I was like. I really okay. like. Okay. I don't, That's I don't get into. Yeah. So country rap is a thing. It's called like outlaw country or something. right? Okay. So it is its own genre of music, and it's kind of been heading in that direction, I would say, since, man, a Big and Rich. I'd go, I, think I, I think it would go all the way back to Big and Rich. Is Florida Georgia Line? Save a horse, ride a, a cowboy. cowboy. Bam, bam, Hate it. Bam, um, bam, bam, is Florida bam. Georgia Line outlaw? Yeah. I, Hate it? No. I, here's the thing. I wouldn't classify those two as outlaw because they don't outwardly rap, but it's in that pacing and cadence of okay. a fast-moving rap song where it's like, the Here phrase, you go. I like dudes. I like sucking dick yeah, and yeah, drinking yeah. beer. And I like. You know that I'm a. I, I want to write a whole gay country album. So don't even be so easy. Go down this road for me. Oh, steal your, steal your thunder. Yeah, don't even try to steal you my. You don't thunder, even go down the Care road Bear. of stealing thunder. Anyways, this this guy uh, had a song called Old Old Town Road. OTR. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. Uh, it's it's super catchy. It definitely catchy. was not that that country to begin with. It wasn't right, and and, and it, it was super catchy, and it was number one on the Billboard country music charts. They took it down, and they said, "Hey, the elements of this song don't have enough country in it to to classify it as a country song." And now, it what sound does that more take? Uh, a white guy to be involved. So uh, that's the that's the funny debate that's been going on because it isn't a racial thing, like for real. Uh, um, no, I know. One of the biggest He's guys in country funny. right now is uh, actually Hootie, right? But Dar- he has Darius white Rucker. guys in the band, so he kind of ticks the box. <laughs> sort of, but it's just him, and it's like there's a style of country that look country western was. A style of music that was in like Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash and Hank Williams. Like in the, the the greats, but it was very much. Here's a guitar, and I'm telling you this, right. and I'm singing my song, right. And that's what defined it as country western, because it was more storytelling, spoken word, that type of shit. Now, country. Look, there was a period of time where country just wasn't cool at all, and everybody was like, "Well, fuck country. I'm I'm done with this." Now that that period was kind of in the '80s, and then '90s, you had like Garth. 
and Hal Ketchum and Martina McBride and uh, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. And, you know, it was fucking cool again, you know? Right. Well, it kind of hit a lull again after that. And then it resurged with uh, like Lady Antebellum and uh, fucking Florida Georgia Line. I mean, because it crossed over. And then Taylor Swift. Because it crossed over in the mainstream, same as those guys from the early 90s did, right? Well, now you're in a spot again of like, all right, well, what's the next cool thing? Because let's face it, as much as you and I like Blake Shelton as a person, I don't really enjoy his music that much. No. It's weird. Or his presence, no. stage presence. You can't be 6'6 six, six and, and play a guitar. You look too... It just looks like you're... Looks like you're cradling a, a baby. It looks like you're playing Guitar Hero. And very um, stiff. Yeah. He doesn't glide across any stage. You know, no. it's very lumbering. No, so he's not hes not your traditional, like, you know. People love him. They do. But they, I think wise. they love him as a personality, right? Whereas me personally, I think his, his ex-wife's music is country-wise more appealing. Like, Miranda Lambert rocks, rocks the shit. Yeah. Um, she's awesome. Like, I could... Sit front row at a concert, you know, a, a concert of hers all goddamn day. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do that at Blake Shelton. Right. He's clearly just marrying up in talent, by the way. Like, and then now Gwen Stefani. So I, I, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. But right. Lil Nas X has created this hip hop rap song that is taking the country by storm. It went viral. And then they just, they took it off the charts and said, look, the elements of this isn't country enough. Well, Billy Ray Cyrus tweeted out to him uh, maybe back in December or January and just said, hey, man, I'm going to say I'm going to send you the same message that Waylon Jennings sent me because they took Achy Breaky Heart off Off the charts for for country. Yeah. Yeah. And ended up being number one in pop, but not country. Um, And he said, look, I'm going to tell you the same thing they told me is, uh, you know, you're an outlaw. And they they pulled me off. Welcome to the Mm -hmm. club, blah, blah, blah. So Lil Nas X tweets back, yo, man, how, can we? Can somebody help me get Billy Ray Cyrus on this track? To sure make enough, it more country. Yes. Yeah. Sure enough, boom. He shows up, they do it, and it is fucking fire. I've been listening to it all goddamn day. You have. And when it I starts. I love it. And we're going to put it at the end of this show. Yeah. So when it starts, you go, okay, that's country, right? It sounds like. So. A- We'll see what they say Billboard chart wise because then it does go kind of back into the same song. But they add either way guitar elements. I yeah. think this song will be number one over all of the charts. Yeah. So fuck country. It doesn't really matter if he wants to do country or not. Like I think this song because it just got released like hours ago. Will will cross and and go mainstream and like dude. I as soon as I heard it, the first thing I told you was. If this, if at night she cries and and uh, when darkness falls, were a TV series, yeah. this would be the song of riding in into town where it's just like, oh yeah, and oh, gosh, so good. If we were to sell it, I would make a trailer to that song and be like, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, kind of using like pop culture, current, yeah, hip hop culture in with this old school yep. Western gangster mentality. Cause, like, because that's what I wanted to do. That's what we're talking about. Correct. But it's hard to get that across, right? But this song cut with like some kind of trailer to me was like, it was like, oh, that's what we want to do. Yeah. The, the problem with it is one, this song's going to blow up and, you know, and then you can't use it. No. And this happened to us with fun. Remember mm-hmm. tonight? We try to get that. We told the story on another show, but, right. um, uh, same thing where it's just like this will become so popular that everybody's going to use it for shit and, you know. It'll be on commercials and shit. Yeah. And like, yeah. It also would have been great for Django Unchained, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. Of uh, Jamie Foxx. Kind of riding, vibe, riding, yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's rad. I've been playing it all fucking day. Either way, we're going to stick it at the end of this. And I think it's really cool of Billy Ray Cyrus to do this and to reach out. Like, because I, I, I'm going to be honest. I, when I first heard this song, and I heard this a couple months ago, I didn't know if it was a joke or not. Like, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, is this yeah. real or is this fake? Like, or do you, you know, do you really want to do this or not want to do this? Mm-hmm. You can't tell, but clearly he was serious about it. Um, he's been really cool about it, Lil, Lil Nas X. And uh, it was even cooler of Billy Ray Cyrus to be like, hey, man. I'll come in the studio with you because they've just released the footage of the two of them recording and like 
I mean, the place was going ballistic in the studio. And then the song comes out. And it's fucking amazing. I, Bill, when I went, woke up and Billy Ray Cyrus is trending number one in America on Twitter, I was just like, Jesus Christ. What year is this? Right. Um, and the fact that you can reinvent yourself and do that or help others, like, Jesus Christ. And, and again, to go back to your point of, like, is he? He's the male Chris Jenner, as far as I'm concerned. Gonna ask you to explain that one. He has this weird, he's growing these, you know, empires from his loins. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I and thought, keeps himself sort of. I thought you said Bruce for a second. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. no. Sorry about that. I was trying to remember in my mind what Bruce had changed to. I thought it was Chris, but it was Caitlin. No, so Chris Continue. is the mom. Right, right, right. Bru- uh, Caitlin is the one who got the, the dick lopped off, right? Yeah, I still yeah. call him Bruce, but yeah. Same. Uh, so Bruce, Bruce is the one that changed mm. into a girl or yep. whatever. Yep. He, Bruce is the one that wear, wears dresses now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I still don't know. Does he have the... Hmm? the does dome. he have the baguette? I don't know. If, or... he, if, if he has the baguette and the, <laughs> and, and the grapes. And the grapes, the grapes and baguette. Yeah. I want him in a jar. Like, that would be the ultimate baller him. move of like, hey, oh, yeah, yeah. welcome to my house. What do you have on the mantle? Dude, I got Bruce Jenner's dick and balls, man. From and when Chris he won the Olympics. Jenner should have it on the. Oh, yeah. She. Because that's how that whole thing happened anyways. She just completely castrated him as a man. So you think that that he is the Chris Jenner of like organizing all of this shit because well, just, Chris Jenner organized the whole Kardashian thing. Yeah. So being he, I think, was the manager's. Um, Miley's manager, yeah. yeah. So he's Him dadager and mom, yeah. Yeah, well, instead of yeah, momager, yeah. and he's growing these little little empires and staying relevant himself. And yeah, I mean, look, Hannah Montana was a fucking cash cow. Right. Um, right. Miley Cyrus is a fucking cash cow. Right. Billy Ray himself, he was on Hannah Montana. Yes. He had his own success, and now he's. I think the wife does some kind of designing, so she's like yeah. got a whole line of rich. stuff. Noah, oh, Noah wow. Cyrus. I, well, the look, that one song was huge last summer. That one song was huge. So, yeah. Problem is, she's not that uh, easy on the eyes. So that's going to be yeah. a tougher sell. Mm-hmm. She's very uh, kind of emo ish, where it's just like, all right. But hey, it's a different. You know, everyone's got their genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? for sure, absolutely. And then maybe she can cross and switch somewhere else. But like, you know, I think, what was it? Uh, the Grammys. Yeah. Where a uh, little homegirl came out there, Miley, and just mm-hmm. crushed it. And I, you know, I'd said here, I was like, dude, she's a mega talented man. And like, she's really young. Her prime is still to come. Oh, yeah. She could drop the biggest country shit of the, the, the decade the if beauty, she wants. Yeah, and she has the beauty of... Being able to switch g- genres. Genres and mix them. So I think this little thing <clears throat> that Cyrus is getting into, right. I think maybe her ultimate Man, if they... She, if, she, if she did an album like that... do both. Yeah, if she yeah. did an album like that, it'd be over with. Well, we'll see what happens with this song and then something will click with Billy and yeah. he'll be like... Here's your next album. You know, oddly Country enough, country hip hop. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and oddly enough, I think I think you know he, the other person who could do it. I think is Post Malone. If he wanted to, I don't think he will. But yeah, but he's not country. He's more uh, like emo and <laughs> hip hop, right? No, so he, he, he plays acoustic guitar. I know, but and that's his, his but not country. He does it like well. That's his favorites. So okay. his favorites are Waylon Jennings and those guys. So like Johnny Cash. Like, he seems more indie. No, he'll show up and play those songs like lights out, like just drop in at bars where you're like, ah, oh, motherfucker, you're amazing. So I, I think he could do it if he wanted to, but that's a, that's a whole nother genre to tackle. Right. Uh, I'm sure he's got enough on his plate right now. Sure. Like doing our fucking show, but I digress. Yeah. I digress. Right. Missed him in three cities now. Right. Three cities now. Right. You know, we could buy three cities just on our own if she wanted to now. Hmm. Bezos' ex-wife. What is that? What is that Jeez. numero looking like? That number was just massive. So the divorce is, is going down and through. Like, Yeah, wh- why wouldn't it? You know, it's one of those things where I just have a hard time 
uh, me personally, right? Putting a dollar amount on a mistress, you know, where it's like, hey, is this woman really worth? Oh, so you thought he was going to break it off and then try to get back with the wife. Yeah, that's what I thought, because it's you look at the money of this, the money aspect of this, and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, because she owns, you know, she she would. uh, She didn't. She gave that up. But uh, she owns. I mean, technically half of Amazon. Yeah. So apparently started it with him. And I mean, that's a. Oh, boy. I mean, that's a. I mean, so I'm going to I'm going to break down the numbers here for you um, because it's the biggest divorce deal in, in the history of the world. What was the one before that? I think it was who Harrison this, Ford. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, who was that I weird, was massive, you got fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mackenzie Bezos, the wife, uh, she's going to keep 25% of the couple's Amazon stock, uh, which, which would give her about 4% stake in the company. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, it's almost hard to, to read. alone, you're like, whoo. It's hard to read. So based on, and I'm going to drop this number for you because this will never be beaten in the history of the world. He's the richest man on earth. He's the richest man of all time. Absolutely. The numbers came out to this. Based on Amazon's current market value, the amounts, if she just cashed in that stock today, is $35 billion with a B. Gotcha. $35 $35 billion. So here's where I go back to, man, is a mistress worth, worth $35 billion? I don't know if he had a choice. I don't know if they're going to still be together, even those two. Who? In the end of all of this, Bezo, Bezos and the Oh, girl. Patrick Weitzel's wife? I, I don't know, man. Is that Patrick Weitzel's wife? Oh, yeah. So she was having an affair as well? Correct. So I think, I don't know. But I, 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 there, there was a rumor that maybe they were separated, Patrick Weitzel and his wife, so who knows? There was a rumor that Bezos was too. I don't know. E- but either way, I, what I, you know, again, this is all fucking fodder, and I guess that's what a podcast is, but uh, the rumor is that he, got, he had gotten popped because she found him cheating based on, I mean, this is some rich-ass shit, some, uh, some private jets when Receipts. you have to sign in. Well, you have to sign in who the passengers are in a private jet. Okay. In case it goes down. And that's, she she kept finding her name. And it was like, hey. Well, how is she going to do it? Fly, you can't fly commercial with your mistress. Why are you? Because you're Bezos, brother. Why are you flying? You're trying to impress a mistress. Yeah. You're Bezos. What are you going to say? Hey, let's go to Vegas on Southwest. We'll check in early. Like, I'll, you know, I'll pay the extra 49 to upgrade us to free so, bag. Yeah. Free bag. And we can get, you know, and within the first a one through 10, you see Bezos lining up, you know, with the rest of those fucking cods. Oh, I would love it. Less of those fish heads. I love just it. Just one through 10, one through 10, a one through 10, please. So please come up here. Oh, is that, is that Jeff Bezos with his mistress in a one through 10? Do you see him sitting through the funny wacky stewardesses of, of Southwest ladies and gentlemen, if the flight oh, goes down, uh, just go ahead and take off your seatbelt. Cause you're all going to die. Right, right, right. Bezos just laughing maniacally. <laughs> I love, love it. the Southwest people. I love it. I love their banter. I love billion. Southwest. But anyway, um, yeah. But I don't know if he had. I don't. Only, I don't know if he has the choice. I think their marriage was going down anyways. I think he did this. <laughs> I think she goes. You're sloppy. You're making me look stupid. <laughs> I said you could. You know, we're separated. But like, don't make me look like a fucking idiot. And you did. Maybe. Uh, but so by, here's what. By the way, so I'm taking it. That private jet that I was talking about, whether we're the wife found the logs. Right. It was a $65 million private jet. If I pay $65 million for a private jet, I'm going to be able to bring hookers on there and you're not going to be able to find Yeah, I don't need it. to sign anybody in. No. Um, I don't why know. Is why is that a Why is that a thing? I'm not a pilot. Why is that pilot. a thing? In case it I'm goes not a pilot, down, I never they're going to know you were on there, blah, blah, blah. But, no. gosh. Boy. Use a fake name. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. His look, his current net worth is $150 billion. 
Mm-hmm. So I just knocked it down by a third. I mean, she could have gone harder than that if she wanted to. She could do half. But yeah. She, she started the company 50. with him back in the day when yep. they're fucking nobodies with nothing. You take half. So he, you know, she doesn't get to vote on the Amazon board is the deal. And then uh, he keeps the Washington Post. So, you yeah, know, because he eventually wants to become part of the government. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, look, if you're, if you're trying to control the narrative of the media, that's essentially brainwashing people anyway. So is there a, is there a bigger power than that? No, I mean, eventually we're basically going to be run by apple and amazon just like yeah. every dystopian oh yeah yeah N- nightmare novel tells you <laughs> that's eventually what happens yes it is and you do it to yourself and you know apple just rolled out their new news thing whether it's just like oh hey mm. we're controlling your eventually news they'll be so big that government has no control yeah i mean look they're trying they tried to break up that that last merger that i said was gonna be a nightmare for everybody what a year ago on this show, year and a half ago on the show, I said that, and I was just like, "Hey, congratulations, everybody out there who's now owned by AT and T. You were every facet of your mm-hmm. home phone fucking life is virtually controlled by AT and T, unless you." That's how it starts. Yeah, and then we're all just run by Netflix, AT and T, and that's Apple it. Yep. and Amazon. Correct. No, <laughs> no president. No Congress, no need. I mean, they're trying. There's nothing they can do. What are you going to do? Because it's, you know, America prides itself on capitalism. Well, that's capitalism at at its finest if you can buy everything else up in the world. Um, But if you're you're looking to get away for the day, uh, Dollaritas are out there. Um, They're not a sponsor, Applebee's. But they're serving $1 strawberry margaritas with Twizzlers right now. At Applebee's? Yep, just for today. Dollar, get yourself a dollarita. Should we do that? Oof. I actually, I, I, I like Applebee's. I'm sorry. I was thinking, I don't I, mind I was thinking Applebee's. about a, a Ruby Tuesdays. Oh, no. I don't like a Ruby Tuesdays. I, I get down on Applebee's I for sure. I get down with an Applebee's. Skins. Yeah, with a Chili's. Oof. Potato um, skins mm-hmm. up in that bitch. Mm-hmm. And when I see those fajitas sliding through the restaurant, sizzling. Oh, God. That's right. Is Damn that it, Applebee's? I would yeah. do it. I'd have it and I'd do it. That's Chili's too, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, is it Applebee's or is it Chili's? No, it's Chili's who has the, the onion. Chili's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way, a Dollarita sounds delightful right now. Absolutely. Gosh, how much alcohol you reckon? Probably a thumb, a thimble full <laughs> and all sugar and it's basically a strawberry smoothie yeah man it's just a tiny bit and you'd see them too just a little squirt mm-hmm. and you're like hey can we or they uh, have it pre-mixed already with the up? thing oh they're super strong yeah if you want to if you want to get drunk off of a dollarita you're probably gonna, gonna have to order three shots it's on gonna the be about side. fifty dollars so. yeah once you throw uh <laughs> three tequila shots on the side well no there's nothing worse than well tequila Mm-mm. that will make you throw up all over your partner and or loved ones. For me at this point, it could be well or Casamigos. Yeah. And it's all the same. That's virtually the same. Tequila yeah. wise, it's all the same. It's all going to do the same thing to me, right? <laughs> you can give me well or what? It, it doesn't matter. Doesn't I'm not, matter. I can't have it. Yeah. No, I, you're, you're no good on tequis. Tequis. Well, it's, I'm, it's rare. I'm good. It's, I'm it's just... rare that you go out and people are like tequila shots. However. <laughs> These days, dude. I know. So I got hooked up with a group of moms in town yes. that take shots. I know. And this is how I used to do it too. I would sip. So I would take like, I would have one so- shot and I would kind of sip it throughout the night with my other drink, right? Sure. That's not even worth it to me now, but they're taking full on shots. Yeah. So we go over to one of their houses in the afternoon. It's like, I'm like, oh, should we have some wine? They're like, we made tequila Moscow meals. <laughs> I'm like, this is I true, by the way. I know, and I'm like, I can't do that at four. And how, sh- and I'm so dorky that I'm like, because my kids kind of take so much to go to sleep, um, and it's such a process that I can't have a drink till five. Sure. Just so that I'm not passing out on my kids in the bathtub. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
So they're at four, three thirty-four tequila Moscow mules. Yeah, Sucking on a Friday. Them down. On a Friday. Yeah. On a Thursday, actually, ah. still a school night. Yeah, still a school night. So I have got to step it up, and I'm not exactly sure how to do it. Coke. Ah, that's the gateway Listen, drug. It's a, how else am Coke, I supposed to do this? Coke is a gateway drug. How to, else to am I heroin, supposed to handle? And then you're on heroin, and then you know. How am I supposed to handle this kind of? I don't know. I, I look. I, I've got no. Or I'm the dorky mom that can't. You know, can't. I'm the narc. Again, I got. What's I, up, youths? Yeah. Hey, right? hey, youths. Hey, youths. Yeah. What are we doing? And then I like I sip it. You know, oh, cool. I'm like, oh, cool. And I like cheers. And then I sip the <laughs> tequila drink and everyone's like, oh, that went down too easy. Let me get another one. And I'm like, I know. Right. And I've had Oops. two sips. Yeah. Yikes. So I don't know, man. Again, I have no roadmap for you in this life. I don't I don't know what to tell you on that one. I'm sorry. Thanks, buddy. I'm sorry. Uh, you're loved, but I have no idea. Um, I, one, one of the shocking things I was trending last night where I was just like, huh? What? The guy who killed Nipsey Hussle, mm-hmm. um, they, you know, he got arrested in Bellflower, California. Here's the thing, man. If you're, if you're on the, on run, the run for murder and you, you're gone for 48 hours and you can only get 30 miles outside the city, that should tell you how shitty L.A. traffic is. And you're just like, man. So true. Or he's he digging the tunnel underground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He probably would have gone a little further if he was able to dig. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, that's how bad traffic is. He had 48 hours of escape time and could only get to Bellflower. Bellflower. California. Fuck off. But, but the shocking thing about it was um, he shows up in court to get arraigned, obviously, uh, like a $7 million bail. I guess it was lawyers. Who? Christopher Darden from the OJ case. Mm, he did good on that one, didn't he? He did not win that one. Um, but... Look, th- that show comes out, right? From, right. Uh, from what was the, the American Crime Story, whatever, with the OJ. Mm-hmm. Wins every single award. It was amazing. Christopher Darden becomes a beloved figure. He was played by uh, what's Sterling, Sterling K. Brown. Yeah, Sterling and K. Brown. And becomes this he beloved never was figure before. again. No. He was like this doofus and everyone, right? Every, yes. And everybody called him Uncle Tom and all this other right. shit. And like, you know. It was, it was he, really fucked up. He begrudgingly was doing interviews again, kind of like, I don't do this. I'm tired of this shit, right? Yeah. Now he's kind of getting back But he out even there. admitted, like, hey, man, my family had, was the ones that were telling me to watch this, that it would, you know, has changed my life and has changed kind of my narrative of my life and who I am and all this stuff. And it made him beloved. Then he shows up in fucking court with this, this goddamn guy, shitty cuz. So the guy that, that killed Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle, his street name was Shitty Cuz. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Stay on brand. Yeah. I, hey. Stay on brand. Be shitty, cuz. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> now listen. So if you're Christopher Darden, That's not this is the one I case would I would walk away from. Because this guy's got no goddamn money. What's Chris- Christopher and Darden Nipsey doing here? Hustle, and Hustle, I'm learning from the last show, is beloved. Oh, to the nth degree. By many people. Yeah. So I actually don't. I and I, had, t- I told you this uh, I on know, the show. But I know, d- but I didn't really know his reach. Mm-hmm. Started watching stuff, started researching, and stuff. more stuff was coming out. So the last episode, I was like, I don't know. He must have done something. How do you just get shot up for no reason, right? So now, I don't know. Look, I don't know what happened, but it he all, it all is depends absolutely on, beloved by a lot everyone. Of people. And look, it all depends on what happened with that conversation, right? I don't, no one will ever know what that conversation was about, probably. Yeah. They've got footage of it. From a security cam, but there's no audio of the two of them talking, shaking hands, and then this guy leaving and then coming back. I, I, I look at this Christopher Darden thing, right? Is there, because he pleaded not guilty. Is there a possibility that it, that it was someone else? Why would Christopher Darden get involved? Because the other, the other part of me is... Again, and I told this story on, on, the, on the last episode about that area. All those motherfuckers know each other. 
I they the streets have to know who this guy is and who did this. They have Nobody's to know. Gonna say. Well, I think in this case, this Hopefully one case, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This because because this guy is so beloved. One person is going to come out and say, hey, man, here's who the fuck did this and fuck this guy. It depends. If it really was blood and crip situation, nobody's saying shit. I don't know. But, but Christopher we'll put Darden. put the flowers and the candles, but we're not actually going to tell you who did it. Why would you, why would you do this? Why would you take this, this, this case or this guy? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, exactly. Just go right back into the Uncle Tom Oh. Worlds, you know what I mean. I mean you're you're like, going back. Maybe to a, you just are another beloved character that you're representing the other side of. Like, what the fuck, bro? And unless again, listen, by, by some small, minute chance that shitty cuz isn't the guy who did this, mm-hmm. then I I don't know what to say or you know I, I don't know because we'll again see. they they left like. And then, so, then, then this guy came back. But I would have to imagine the fucking streets and all of these people know who did this. And, you know. Maybe I, shitty because it's too on the nose, huh? No. Can't be him. Yeah. So too who, on the who nose. Knows? Who knows? I, I don't, again, why Christopher Darden's involved? No idea. But that was mind altering where I was like, again, what year is this? Yeah. Because we're back to. What fucking year is it, dude? Billy Ray Cyrus, Cyrus is trending. Fucking Christopher the Darden is trending. Top ch- is going to be back in, in court representing mm-hmm. somebody, you know, who killed someone beloved, <laughs> beloved by his community. <laughs> the other thing is uh, this: the, the next story is this Howard Schultz thing. He shows up to do a town hall meeting, which I love that this is this has begun. This is going to be the golden age of podcast for the next Ooh. two years. Mark Ooh. my words, going through this fucking democratic. Fuck fest. Another guy entered the race yesterday. So you're up to 21 candidates. Um, Chris uh, Howard Schultz is running as an independent. He did a town hall where he, he pulled the Clint Eastwood. You know, you saw it at the Republican convention. You can't do it. The RNC. You, you cannot show up and reference an empty chair on stage and say this is America. And this, I mean, that's he what he did, did. That exact thing. Exact thing last night. And I watched it and I was like, holy fuck. Because again, I. If you don't listen to the show every day, which is fine, I'll, I'll give you a refresher. I actually want to see Howard Schultz run as an independent and, and see it all the way through. I just want to see what happens because it doesn't happen very often. And I want to see how much of a dent somebody can make in the political system like that. Right. So I hope he stays in the race. But that was your opener. Oof. So, I mean, again, again, trending wise. Sure. Great. Billy Ray Cyrus, Mm -hmm. Christopher Darden, and then Clint Eastwood. Um, And I'm like, where are we? Where am I? Where are we? I entered a portal. That's what I feel like. And I'm like, is this this a joke? Like, I thought it was an April Fool's Day joke. And I was like, wait, we're four days past that now. This should be. No, no, this is all real. Every one of these stories was fucking real. And I'm like, man, I... Having a hard time with it. Having a hard time with it. That that Clint Eastwood thing was so infamous. You know, that fucking chair. Remember the SNL oh, yes. sketches and all that shit? Like, oh, yes. And then you literally did you did it the on. Mark, for sure. You, you did it on there and it was just like, this chair represents America. I would call it America. The problem with Howard Schultz, and I, and I watched it. Um, I watched his town hall meeting last night. It's not that he's not a smart guy. Because he is. Clearly. He's. he's Clearly brilliant and, you know, created Starbucks for Christ's sakes. Can't, um, whatever you think of Starbucks, you know, that, that the, the coffee or the corporation, you can't shit on that guy. He changed the world. He really did. It was a company mm-hmm. that changed the fucking world. He is smart. He is intelligent. He has been rich for a, a really rich for a very long time. It is hard to get back in touch and say, hey, man, I want to do shit for the American people, the people, you know. Look, Trump pulled it off somehow, uh, but as an, an underdog, I'm, but he was more of like, I'm not in the political system. Fuck that. I'm an underdog in this system, not rich versus poor. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, all that other shit. So Howard Schultz, man, it's tough because you're like, man, I, the other part of me watched it was just like, why do you want to do this, bro? Why do you want to do this? I, and again, I hope he does all the way through. I just want to see it happen. 
But I looked at him last night in the heat he was taking on social media and everywhere else on, on, on his very first thing. And it wasn't even a, a debate. It was just a town hall meeting where he's just answering questions from people. And I was like, why do you even want to subject yourself to this? Because, again, it was probably unplanned. You know? Yeah. He's, the chair was on stage already. And it was off just like. Off the cuff. Yep. And then, very off. The, very off whoopsie. script. Right. Because that's, that's not a guy that goes, goes out and does town hall meetings with the people very often. No. You know, he's in a boardroom. He's a boardroom guy. But this kind of goes more to my dystopian society where Starbucks is going to run the country. Well, he stepped down as, as president of Starbucks, so he no longer Just runs saying. it. Yeah, I don't know. I, coffee, I, I, I like, <clears throat> coffee I go back and forth on. There's a lot of great coffee shops that are now popping up that are lesser and lesser known. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, like coffee bean. Coffee bean's a good one. Like right. that. There's a lot of coffee beans. There's a lot of peats. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, not, they're not good enough, but yeah. You don't think so? I will take, I'll, I'll put it this way. I will take coffee bean any day over the week over Starbucks. I don't like, I don't like. I'll take anything over Starbucks, over Starbucks is the if least I can. My thing. Um, I will take anything over Starbucks if I can. And you know, like I, obviously uh, Black Rifle Coffee is a sponsor, right? I love Black Rifle Coffee. I love it. They're trying to open up brick and mortar stores. That is a big push for them nice. in the next uh, two to three years. And I believe they already have maybe five, ten locations already open, right? I've been to the one in Vegas. It's great. It's right next to uh, Battlefield Vegas. So if nice. you're out there, head in, man. You can. It's a great little coffee shop. Um, when I'm in a city, and the CEO of the, the company is Evan Hafer, <clears throat> when Evan and I are in cities, and he got me started on this, and, and, I, and I think it's brilliant. Um, he's not one of those people who's just like, fuck you. You only have to drink Black Rifle coffee all the time. Whatever city we go to together, he goes out of his way to find a mom and pop shop. Mm-hmm. And try whatever roast or blend or whatever it is. And then he'll buy a bag usually and then take it with him. Um, And that's what I've been trying to do in all of these cities that I've been traveling to. Is like go out of the way to find a mom and pop store or a diner or something that I'm like, hey man, what what kind of coffee is really out there? Because I, to me, I'll go, like here's what I hate the most, right? Here's my onesie twosies. Dunkin' Donuts coffee, I can't, I, I hate it. I thought you loved it in New York. Uh, in, in New York, but only in New York. And I think it's different. It's it's different, Seems different there. Out there. It's weird, right? I got a lot of s for sh- shit. Like I don't curse on here. Yeah, I got a lot of shit for <laughs> um, having a Dunkin' Donuts the last time we went to New York, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was sort of a thing where I was like, well, if you know, you know. Like everyone in New York drinks Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts. Donuts. Yeah. So I don't know why, but it's just. There. I think That's how people we do in New York make coffee better. I think they make bagels better. I think they make pizza better. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's yeah, true. Because they're true. all immigrants. So, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if they are or not. But, like, uh, in New York? What, what I know is this. Yeah. If you're running a, a Dunkin' Donuts coffee there, you know how to make good coffee. And it's more than likely, chances are you're going to get a better cup than you will at Starbucks. Or it's a mental thing. I don't know. So I'll go there. Everyone has a Dunkin' Donuts in New York. So Correct. Don't come for me. So I will I will go there over Starbucks. Like that is my onesie twosie, but only in New York. In real life, I, you know, anywhere else, Dunkin' Donuts is Trash. the worst. And then Starbucks and then, uh, you know, up from there. But like we have some great coffee shops here in Wilmington and, uh, you know, Red Eye Bakeries downtown. Well, they serve Black Rifle coffee, but like. There you go. Of course um, they have the best coffee. Yeah. Th- where's that place on Kerr? Um, the, uh, the Biddy, but no, the. Man, I asked the wrong person. The place on Kerr. Yeah. Uh, it's right there on Kerr and uh, Wrightsville Avenue, right on that corner right there. Got it. I think they moved, but it's Brit. Uh, boo, boo, you so bet. Bam, bam, yeah. Bam, 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 no, we bam, have no computers bam, on this bam, show to bam, check, bam, but. Bam, um, bam. I'm not going to look up the. No, of course not. Kerr. Of course not. But uh, they give what a, a portion of their proceeds to special needs children, and well, they actually have a lot of special needs. So they all work there. Okay. So the people, everyone that works there is special needs, except for managers and things like this. Right. So it's an interesting place, but... Biddy and Bo's Coffee is the name of it. I just looked it up. So. Oh, I said that first, but yeah. yeah. 
nowhere near it. But um, I said it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll the tape. Um, I said it first. Biddy and Bose. So Biddy and Bose, and and that's where they're. And you said all the workers there are special needs. Yes. Which is great. Yeah. Um. So I, look, I've been there. Their coffee is amazing. Um. Uh, Port City Java. Port City Java is like our. I'm going to say coffee bean, not Starbucks, but right. it's like our coffee bean out here. So in Wilmington, you know, you try to go to different places like that where you're like, all right, great. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of good coffee shops here. I don't need to go to Starbucks. Therefore, I don't necessarily see Starbucks as like an AT&T or something else. Oh, okay. Because I, I still think coffee is a personalized thing where it is cheap enough that you can open up your own store and sell it. And, you know, whether it's good and people are going to come or obviously a different story. But I, I, I just, that one I have a hard time believing that Starbucks can actually take over the world where I'll give you Amazon, okay. I'll give you AT&T, and I'll give you Netflix and Apple. Like, those I'll give you. Coffee, eh, I'm, I'm still on the fence. Of, cause same with fast food to me. Where when like you, you could have said green mermaid Starbucks thing. Yeah. Anywhere you go, it's a touchstone. No, it is. Oh, the Starbucks. Right. Oh, the, you know, oh, okay. Well, they have a Starbucks. They're at least something civilized. <laughs> so whatever it means, whether it's good coffee or not, it's something more. And that's the genius of what he did. It is. Which it, is it, the, the ingrain, the marketing, the thing of it makes you feel comfortable if there's a Starbucks there. It's like a Coca-Cola logo to me. Right. Where, where if I see that logo anywhere around the world, wherever I'm traveling, whatever, I'm like, oh, all right, that's Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, look, he's done it. Uh, and congratulations. I don't know how he's going to fare after last night, though. Fuck, that was a we'll rough see. opening. It was a rough opening. Uh, you know, it wasn't rough. I, that new Yellow Wolf album dropped. Jabe's Trunk Music 3. Oh, hells, yes. Catfish Billy. Catfish Billy 2 is on there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Trunk Catfish Music Billy 3. Catfish Billy was one of my faves on Trunk Music. Yep. Yeah, Trunk Music 3, so he did the whole Do thing. Do we have a Pop the Trunk number 2? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Okay. But the, Can't touch that song. I've listened to it maybe three or four times now, and it's pretty, it's pretty fucking sick. So. Oh, yeah. Congrats to Yellow Wolf. Who does he have on there featuring? Anybody? fucking rad or you know i it's just been playing like i'm the worst at like you are with google i play music in the background for writing so usually the microsoft word is up or final draft is up over the spotify chart so i can't see the names of the songs or windows 95 yeah exactly um i keep an old school computer for a reason mm -hmm. uh the keys are bigger all that other shit like right. i think writing wise it's a comfort thing where it's just like, all right, great. I know, I, I like, I, I get there's there's newer computers and I've used them, but it's like the keys feel too thin. <laughs> they do. I like to hear that banging. The whole thing feels thin and flimsy. Yeah, I like to I hear like, that banging. But... <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I would have, I would have been great with a typewriter if that was my era, but right. it's not obviously. Those are coming back. Tom Hanks is bringing those back. Yeah, they're not coming back. They really aren't, and they never will. They're a fucking but gosh, bitch, is he man. Try he's trying. Well, look, if you're a writer like myself, right, and you're writing a book, again, spell check and correct and all that shit, like, fuck you, fuck you if I'm going to put white out over it and then go back. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know how long it would take to write a book like that? And with as much editing as a book requires, mm -mm. man, I don't even, like, to be real with you, because I saw that Tom Hanks thing where he's trying to bring back typewriters. Mm -hmm. To be real with you, thinking back now to like Hemingway and those guys. They're the real, it's like the baseball players that didn't have steroids. Yeah, or the, the bands that actually had to play the whole fucking song mm -hmm. together and be awesome. Like, Jesus Christ, I, I can't imagine that in, in, in any world with whiteout and then going back and forth and back and forth. What and about before forth. there was whiteout? I know. Imagine writing that shit and then having it transcribed by somebody else. Good night. That would have been like Shakespeare. What the fuck? Right. A twill. You know, you got a fucking twill and in ink. Yeah. He was a hack anyway. Yeah, he was. Uh, maybe it's a quill. I don't. What am I saying anymore? I'm the quill. Yeah. Is it an ink? I think I just said twill, man. 
No, it's quill. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, a twill is a fabric so woven as to have a surface of diagonal parallel ridges. I don't know what I'm saying. For the audience, I want you to know this. I'm, I'm trying to fight something here. Um, I've been sick for a few days ever since we got back. I'm on so many meds right now. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing fucking flying Anne Franks right now. I mean, just... I'm just seeing a legless Anne Frank flying over you, and right. she's free. Right. She is fucking free right now. Right, right, right. So forgive me. I Boy, man, I'm really on the... On the cusp? Yeah, you know what it is? It's fucking day quill and uh, airborne gummies and, you know, 90 vitamin Cs, some other fucking ginger mixed with, you know, cayenne pepper and, mm-hmm. and whatever, like... I don't, does any of this stuff work? No, I don't feel any fucking different. I feel like shit for days. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. Right. I will say it helps with my mindset, mm-hmm. you know? Because again, up here, free as a bird. Right. Vocally, I'm a fucking idiot. Sure. I mean, very close to some form of, of retardation. Right, um, right. But in my mind, mm-hmm. boom. Fun, huh? Flying like an angel. Fun. Yeah. Just a just a big just a little little, little circus flying in there. like a, a, a just goddamn a midget angel. circus in there. Yeah, I feel like those kids in that the the the, the Thai cave. You know, did you hear they give them they gave them uh, ketamine? Stop. Yeah, that's what they fucking gave them to get them out of the you the goddamn cave. Have. You better have. Man. I thought it was Valium. No, that's, that's what I thought too. I was like, give them some Valium, ketamine. give them some Xanax. Because they're they're doing this movie. Um, ketamine. Yeah, they're doing this movie about the kids, and so they're doing all this research and all this other so shit. They look so happy. Huh? <laughs> I know. And they were, I guess, they were worried about the kids panicking, so they gave them special K, man. Okay, because they, I did hear that, but I didn't think it was ketamine. Like they were like, yeah. we gave them. I thought it was like Xanax, Vol- Valium to no to ketamine calm was them their down. fucking drug, bro. He believed that. Cat tranquilizer, huh? Man, special K. What if they went into a K hole? I know. Then uh, no wonder the little bodies. Ketamine? Maybe that's the maybe answer. Maybe their little bodies were, you know, hey, we don't care about getting out of this, this cave. Like, hey, what's up, man? Mm. Maybe I should go get stuck in a goddamn cave. You know how hard it is to get special K these days? Seriously. That it's is so hard to get anything these days. Man, special K, though, is virtually impossible. If you don't know what it is at home, it's it's a cat it's a cat tranquilizer. Yeah, used for cats. <laughs> and you have to you have to cook. It comes in a liquid form, right? They usually inject it. You have to cook it up mm-hmm. and fucking bake it, and then whatever. It was, and, and you're probably saying to yourself, Ross, when did you ever do special K? Right, college, college man. You know, yeah, it was a party drug for sure. It was in the rave scene. Yeah, and it was like safe. a lot of K holes. That was safe. You know, it was just right. like, all right, what, what are we doing? Pull Taking people cat out of- tranquilizers. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Cook it up. Throw some special K down, brother. Throw, throw some ketamine on the grill for me. Brother. Yeah. And a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoon land on that special K. Whew. I remember a buddy of mine in college, man. He, he, uh, he dated this vet. And uh, like, that's how he got it. Mm, oh, yeah. And he was just taking it from this, this vet he was dating. I was like, shit. Mm. Um, a few years later, I ended up dating a vet. And I was like, hey, man, what do you do with the fucking special K? Like, do they really look down on that or frown upon that? You know? She was just like, oh, no. Oh, did you date that girl? Who? That you still talk to? Who? The vet. No, no. You're thinking of a different vet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, this was like, I would say two, 2000. 2001, somewhere in that that era. Okay, I thought we were going to have some hot goss on the show. No, 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 no. Like revealing something, we get in a fight. No. You know, live. No. Oh, live on air? No, no, no. This was, Sorry. This was early 2000s. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, different city, too, by the way, San Diego. Um, more of a laid back vibe down there. Where sure. It was just like, hey, cool. And so I asked her, I was like, hey, because I think it was... Two, yeah, I was two years out of college at that point. And my buddy, had date, like I said, my buddy had dated a vet in college. And that's so where you knew what to was, ask for. I did. And I was just like, and in San Diego where it's just like, hey, that's more of a laid back hey. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, we can get to the other vet story because this, this is a good one. So um, anyways, I asked her, I was like, yo, what are, we, what are we doing here? Like, can we, 
can you get some of this? Sure, uh, sure. What, sure. what is like, this really all about? She goes, you know, the weird thing is, is like we throw it, we just throw it out all the time. And I was like, really? Why? And she was like, yeah, you know, you're worried about it going bad or whatever it is or whatever. And I was like, uh, could you bring it out? Like hypothetical. Could, could you bring this home? Look. Right. Right. Um, and uh, she was like, yeah, but then what do you what do you do with it? And I was just like, well, I heard you had to cook it and all that other shit and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, do you, do you know how to do that? And I was like, no, no, I actually don't. I don't. Was hoping you did. Yeah. Yeah. We had a guy in. the, And so it, I'm not going to say his name, but we had a guy in the fraternity. So the guy who was dating the vet, he was cooking it up on a Bunsen burner that he took from. I didn't know you had to cook it. A lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you had to cook it. You had to cook it. Um. So it comes up and it looks like a white powder, very I don't cokish. Know if you do, but yeah, very cokish. Mm-hmm. No, no, you. I mean, you could inject it, I guess, but or just take it. Yeah. Uh, How do they give it to cats? They, they don't they, cook they, it they up and give. It. They inject it. Yeah, they inject it. It's because it's a liquid form. So, but this you can cook it up, and then that's how people do it: is is they snort it, right? So, I, I years later, um, uh, I, I had a great, I had a great vet in L.A. Right. And so we've been friends forever, uh, took the dog there every single time or whatever. And so I slid that. I was like, ah, we've been bros for a long, long time at this point. I come in here twice a year for the checkups for the dogs and all this other shit. And I was like, you ever get any of that special K? Okay? Dead serious. She looked at me and she was like, no. And that's a fucking felony. And I was like, whoa, 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 And I know that. I'm just, I was just kind of joking around with you. <laughs> just a little, just a little special K joke between vets, you know? Gosh. Like, she's a friend of mine. I, I consider her a friend. She saw my dog for years and years and years. And like, I'm still friends with her to this day on social media. And I'm like, but that was the point in the friendship where you're like, oops. Not my people. Not my. Not my people. Not you my can't have peeps. a real conversation about <laughs> ketamine with me and like ha- what you do with it and whatever. Not my people. And you can always tell who your people are. Like when you bring up something in a, in a conversation where you're like, all right, cool. And they switch. It reminded me of uh, Jim Carrey and Cable Guy where, where he goes up to Matthew Broderick. And Matthew Broderick's like, hey, so I heard if I give the Cable Guy a hundred bucks, you could do what's his name? I want it. Tell yeah. me who did this right now because that's an offense affordable by yeah, law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you're whoa, like, whoa, whoa. And he's like, I no, I'm sorry, we man. Cool. And he goes, I'm just fucking with you. I'll hook you up. I'll juice you up. Or whatever he <laughs> says, Jim Gary. That's what it reminded me of. And I was like, oh. And I was waiting for like the joke portion to end. Like, sure. oh, hey, you're just kidding, right? And it never came. So I was just like, Cool, we'll just dap it up. Cool, and, cool, cool. You know? And what do I owe? What do I owe you? This is exactly. now transactional. So I do that too with uh, <laughs> groups of moms. So I'll be like, yeah, I think like when I was when I was pregnant or at when I just had Jagger, I was like, yeah, dude. And they're like, for for your husband, if he gets his a little snip, tiny snip, they give him a bottle of Percocets. And then I was like, for us. We push a baby out and they tell us to take a fucking Motrin. Crazy. And the moms that are like, the, but Motrin and Tylenol, totally. I mean, it does actually work better for me. And I didn't want to be all, you know, I go, no, no, no. And they drop. And then the girl that's like, what the fuck? They don't give you anything. I'm like, my people, my people, my people right? Yeah. And that's the deciding factor. That's like, the deciding hey. factor. Yeah. Friends. Drugs. Or real friends. Right. Friends. Okay. Small acquaintances. talk. Acquaintances. Small talk friends. Yeah. Or medium talk friends, right? Like yeah. the real, <laughs> getting into the real nitty gritty, right? And it was, it was so funny the other day. It was like a group of, a couple of them new to the group or whatever. And we all were sitting outside. Yeah. Tequila, whatever. And I said that. And there was two. <coughs> two people, two girls on the end, not these that were next to me, were like, oh, well, yeah, you know, Motrin, what? it works. Yeah, it yeah, works yeah. the best. I didn't want to take it. They offered it to me. I didn't want to take it. I go, what the fuck? At least take it home for a rainy day. Yeah. You don't say no thank you. Yeah, my, my vet wasn't playing in L.A. I was just like, whoa, all right, mm-hmm, cool. Because in mm-hmm. L.A., by the way, and it's not like this everywhere else, but like the vets are so packed there in L.A., First of all, dogs are babies out there. Right. And once you get your dog into one of these places, it's almost like getting your kid in a preschool where you're just like, you don't go anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't go anywhere else because they don't have any space and they'll tell you like, hey, we're not taking on new pets or anything. Right. Um, So with that, like, you know, I couldn't leave at that point. And I was just like, oh, 
Ooh, I was totally that should have been joking. at the end. Yeah, that should be at the end. But I couldn't do anything. Like that's that was the only place, and it was, it was on a uh, uh, Santa. Mon- you know it probably. It was on the corner of Santa Monica and um, kind of like uh, Crescent Heights. And so it was just like, man, that was the only good vet there. Like, what am I gonna do? So you still took him there, no? That too. Yeah. Once you're in, you're in. You can't like you know yeah. L.A. Oh yeah. Like, what am I gonna go across town to another vet? Like, nope. No, yep. thank you. And try to audition it. James, we have a crime corner today. We do. Oh, crime oh. corner. Crime corner. Crime corner.
Pussies. <laughs> so all I'm saying is this, James. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm willing to fight for, for justice and truth, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. Going down a road to help a man who may or may not have been stabbed by a ghost with a ghost axe. And planted. <laughs> planted meth on your... <laughs> Smoked already, too. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Now, revolutionary figure, figgener, and we. All of us are taking Dayquil. We're all. Um, yeah. This one goes out to Dan Robbins. Dan Robbins, Yeah, revolutionary figure of the day, Dan Robbins. Okay. Um, if you don't know this man, this genius, this artiste, he is the guy who created Paint My Numbers. Died at, died at 93. I think natural causes, by the way. So yeah, I, I, how I know, is this time? I know what you're thinking. I, I wasn't uh, kayaking or anything else. Um, he look. He's the. We're talking about artists at the top of the show, reinventing a genre. This guy reinvented an entire genre forever. I liked the, what the article said about this guy. Initially, he was laughed at, scoffed at by all of his peers. Sure. And then, paint by numbers became a massive thing for years and years and years and years to come. People are still do, 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 doing this at old folks' homes and all that other shit. Kids are doing it. Mm-hmm. So you, if you're out there as an artist right now and you're saying to yourself, man, I want to cross genres and I want to be the first at something and really fucking explore that, whatever sure. that is. Sure. No, you have Dan Robbins mm-hmm. who did it, mocked, frowned upon, outlawed. Sure. And then Lil Nas X, which both are equally groundbreaking. We're going to play that song right now. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is Lil Nas X and the remix of Old Town Road with Billy Ray Cyrus. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>